Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to give you a special episode about a rare Chinese 8-bit computer from 1998. It was made by the company named Xiaobaowang or Subur in English. Let's open it. This is the SB2000, which I bought online in brand new condition, sealed. So here is everything I got. We have a keyboard, the unit itself, two controllers, two manuals, six floppy disks, and also a mouse. A bit more info about Subor. Subor company was established in China by Duan Yongping in 1990. They were specialized in video games at first. However, if we take a look at the manual or the package, we can see that it was all advertised as a multimedia learning computer, targeted at kids. Game consoles were a bit sensitive in China at that time. In fact, they were officially banned in 2000 due to the fear of negative impact on children. So Duan repackaged the concept into learning computer and the TV ads or brochures specified well its educational purposes. Jackie Chan even appeared on one of the TV commercials for it. At that time, it quickly became the hottest topic of discussion for kids at school. But well, I'm wondering whether the kids actually use it to learn or to play. As it was compatible with Famicom's cartridges, we can ask this question. Let's get a bit more familiar with the device. This is the main unit. It's kind of heavy. It doesn't feel cheap at all. We have a power switch on the right and what seems to be a reset button on the left. It has the shape of the company's logo. On the right side of the unit, we have the floppy disk drive. We will talk about it in a bit. On the back side, we can find the power input, a port for the mouse. It's a DB9 port so we can use old mouse. There is even a printer port, but I don't have a printer to try it. There is the keyboard port, which is an AT connector. For the video output, we can either connect it through the RF output or the AV output. On the left side, finally, we have two ports for two controllers. These are 15 pins connectors, just like the original Japanese Famicom. But from the pinout I saw online, it doesn't seem to be compatible with it, to be confirmed. These are the controllers. They aren't too light, they feel comfortable in hand, but I don't really like the D-pad. I prefer the one that is on the NES or the Game Boy. It's interesting to notice that the controller number 2 does not have a start nor a select button. The mouse has three buttons. It seems really good, honestly. Not too cheap. We will see this. Finally, the keyboard. For me, this is the most important part. Indeed, at first I was looking for the keyboard online. When I saw that it was part of an 8-bit computer, the SP2000, I decided to buy the whole set. As I said earlier, the connector is an 81, which also uses the PS2 protocol, so we should be able to use it on other computers, even Zill 8-bit computers, thanks to this adapter. The keyboard is really heavy. I find that its design makes the hand position more natural. It's not mechanical, of course, but it feels great typing on it. Let's plug and power it on to see what we get. I've plugged the computer to the screen with AV cables. There is no floppy disk in the drive, and so let's press the power button. Okay, so there is a boot screen. As you heard, the sound is not limited to cheap tunes, and there are even voices. It shows a total amount of RAM of 1 MB. Note that they also included the 512 kilobytes of VRAM inside this megabyte of RAM. The system asks for the current date and time, and we have to do this uh, every time, at every boot. The OS that you see is called SB-DOS, uh, for Subor dos It looks like MS-DOS, it smells like MS-DOS, it has the same comments as MS-DOS, but it's not MS-DOS. In fact, this computer's processor is the UM6576, which was a very powerful 8-bit chip, based on the 6502 architecture. As I just said, a few comments are available here, which are the same as MS-DOS ones. Uh, we can either type help to get the list of them, or we can just check the manual directly. Apart from these comments, there is absolutely nothing to do from this screen if we don't insert a floppy. There were 6 floppies bundled with the computer, and from what I know, there was a total of 22 different floppies that we could buy at that time in the stores. 
After trying all my six floppies, only one was working. Fortunately, I was able to find back all the floppy images online, so I downloaded the most interesting ones and I rewrote them on the floppy disks. Uh, only one was really dead, the five others could be used. Okay, let's try this one. Put it inside a floppy drive and reboot the computer, because I would like to see how it will auto-boot on it. Okay, so I didn't type anything and it's typing by itself sbwin here. So they have created a Windows 98 clone that has mouse support. Of course, it's not compatible with the real Microsoft Windows 98, but I still find it pretty impressive considering that this is an 8-bit computer. Each floppy disk contains a bunch of software, uh, which includes a piano player, Minesweeper, a typing game, Solitaire and SBDOS and also the main program that is on the floppy disk. So we have Paint, we have an English dictionary, a Chinese dictionary and FBASIC. Let's take a look at FBASIC because this is the one that interests me the most. This implementation of BASIC supports software floating point values. It implements almost all the operations that we would expect from a BASIC interpreter. Input, print, for, go sub, go to, etc. On the math side, there are operators for exponential, logarithm, cosinus, sinus, square root, and that's it. There is no directive for graphics. It makes it pretty limited, right? Well, while I was testing it intensively, I noticed that even if they are not documented in the given manuals, there are peek and poke instructions. That does not solve everything though. The official manual still doesn't give any information about the architecture, the memory organization, the memory mapping, the IO ports, etc. However, as I said in the beginning, this computer is hardware compatible with the Famicom or the NES. This means that it must share some hardware characteristic with it. Let's try this. On the NES, the controller port 1 can be accessed through the address 4060 in hex. We can write a small basic program to read the buttons pressed on the controller. This is the program I came up with. There are a few instructions. We can have a try. So I will press on the button A launch the program, and yeah, it shows me A. Now start and select, run the program. Yeah, good, it's working. So yes, even though it's not really documented, we can use the NES or Famicom documentation to have a better idea on how the computer is made. The other thing that I would like to test is the cartridge port. I have this Famicom game here. Uh, I'm going to insert it and power on the computer. It boots directly to it. We don't go through the boot screen nor the SB DOS. I feel like it's a compatibility mode that is activated as soon as we insert a game. Uh, I'm going to select a game, Dr. Mario for example. It boots, great, let's play with it. So the game boots and plays normally, but for sure the music is a bit slow. Well, the entire game is a bit slow. So let's reset and try another game. Uh, Tiny Toons 3, yeah, I love this game. Yeah, the game and the sound are also slow here, but it's definitely playable. My guess is that this super console is PAL, because PAL is used in China. But these games are NTSC, because they're used in Japan and USA. And NTSC Famicoms run slightly faster than the PAL NES. So these games are meant to be run at a higher frequency, and this is why they are a bit slow on this machine. So I've tested this computer for a while, and honestly, I find it really cool. It might even be a powerful beast. However, we cannot make sure of this. In fact, I couldn't find any datasheet about the processor, the UM6576, nor any technical specification. Moreover, even if it turns out to be a very powerful CPU and computer overall, we can do nothing about it by default. There is no monitor, no way to write assembly directly on it, no documentation on the IOs, memory mapping, the graphics, etc. It's just a black box. Well, we know that it shares with the NES and the Famicom, so let's say it's a gray box. Uh, this computer, released back in 1998, was not successful. From my point of view, 
there are several factors, except for the Famicom compatibility part. It's a gray box. How are third parties supposed to write native games or programs for it? They can't. And it seems like it's not even designed for this. Another factor is that it was completely targeted to kids. Not for teenagers nor adults. Uh, and this is reflected in the software library for it. Most programs are about scholar education and not really computer science related. We can't even consider it as a real computer, mainly when we realize that at that time, in 1998, there were already 32-bit processors and the 8-bit computers it would have competed with were already 15 years old. As an educational machine, it's also very limited. The softwares quickly become redundant, even for a kid. Most of this learning machine from Subor were in fact used by kids to play Famicom games and not really study. Okay, so is it even a good gaming machine then? Well, not really. The game library is limited to Famicom games, which don't even play at full speed. And we have very few simple native games. I mean, games that can be run directly from SBWin or SBDOS. Moreover, at that time, this computer, the SP2000, cost 10 times more than the price of a classic Chinese Famiclone. To conclude, if one day this device gets fully reverse engineered and we get an open source SDK, it can get very interesting. But as it is today, it's way too limited. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a bit particular, any changes from what I do usually. I hope you like it. You can give me any suggestion, any anything in the comments as usual. And see you next time.